we've uh, agreed with the candidates anyway to follow the agenda. Uh, general, general rules. This meeting is not a town hall meeting. It is not a debate. The meeting is an opportunity to listen to candidates, to answer questions, some of which will be submitted prior to this evening, and these candidates have them in their possession. Uh, we also would be submitting questions from the question box, which will be um, over, which will be scrutinized by the panel and brought into a question and given to the moderator. This is an opportunity to listen, to evaluate your candidates, to establish a clear and concise picture of who you want to represent you for the next four years. I'm addressing the audience. Please refrain from interrupting the candidates during their responses. We realize as well that all your questions not, will not be answered, but we assure will be assured every effort will be taken to bring forth at the next meeting at the Portland Legion Hall on October the 16th. Candidates, when a question is asked, please refrain from using any current council position unless it's directly related. Your duty is to answer the questions so as the audience can establish your position. Please refrain also from referring to another candidate as the public is again only interested with your response to the question. Thank you. Start with the mayoral candidates. We have three questions for each of them. They have not seen these questions, so they are being caught off guard. And we're going to start in order with Donald Wills first, if you could get to the mic. And the question is, what vision do you have for Rideau Lakes Township at the end of your term? Good evening. The vision that I would like to have for Rideau Lakes is that anybody that lives here can work here and earn a dirt decent living. Uh, we have a problem in the current council administration with tenders being let out of the township with business people not giving the opportunity to bid on the projects, I feel. Uh, we're going to grow, and with that we're going to have growing pains, uh, especially in our villages with our sewer and water. If it migrates into our wells, we're all going to have problems in all the villages. We see that in Portland now. So I think it's essential that we build up our reserves if we can and get our debt down. Um, the lakes need to be a priority. We need to keep them clean to keep our tourism active and keep our tourist businesses active to the way it was 20 years ago when the Americans were just covered the streets. Um, the amount of uh, negative publicity we've gotten over the last eight months, I don't know if it ever can be repaired with the algae bloom. Uh, it's spread all over. Uh, the negative publicity hasn't helped us at all. So that's my uh, main concern for the township. Thank you, Doug. Uh, Rob Dunfield. Thank you, Ms. Knight. I guess the vision that I have is that we have a, a nice rural place to live. We all moved here for a reason, and one of them is because we enjoy the township, the lakes, and everything like that. I would like to see our debt reduced considerably. I would like to see our tax rate <coughs> stay at a very reasonable cost and still provide the essential services that we need to operate the township. There's issues in Westport that we have to, as a partner, we have to deal with them. I think it's a very um, immense problem we have there, and I don't think they can handle them by themselves, whether with our help with the, through the Ministry of Environment, and, and as a neighbor, it's very important that we get the lagoon situation straightened around, however it happens. Uh, it's not our issue, but 
it's our neighbor, and everything runs downhill. And that is a concern of mine. Uh, having lived on the lake, I, and I, I think it's very important we support lake associations more than we've done in the past. 40%, um, 45% of our tax dollar comes from the lake area. They should get 45% of the revenue we have is generated back at the lake. Lake properties, a lot of them on private lanes and everything like that. We have, we have which was instituted by this council. We have a great um, program for private lanes. It's one of the few townships that do that. It's not a lot of money, but it's a start and it helps it all out. But the vision is safe, happy, friendly community that I can grow up in and my kids can grow up in. When they want to, they're arguing about who's taking over our bed already. We're not even dead yet. Thank you, and that's my vision. Thank you. Ron Holman. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for the question. And thank you for everyone for coming out tonight and for the organizing committee. I know it's like trying to herd chickens together to try and get politicians all together at once. So I, I know the frustrations you've had over the past few weeks to try and pull us together. I see. First of all, let me say, I'm proud of our township. I'm proud of the residents. I'm proud of the, 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 the tremendous township we had, the, 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 the Regal Canal and the many assets we have. And I'm proud of our volunteers that have made our township what it is today and certainly will continue and be an important part as we move into the future. I'm proud of, we have a huge township. We're 100 square kilometers larger than the city of Toronto. We're 630, 640 square kilometers. I'm sorry, we're 730, 740 square kilometers. City of Toronto is 600. We have a vast area. We have 14 people per square kilometer. City of Toronto has 4,700 people per square kilometer. So we have to maintain our roads. We have to maintain all of our infrastructure with 14 people per, road, per kilometer. So per square kilometer. So we, I see the township keeping our township affordable. We have the lowest tax rate in the United Counties of Leeds and Grenville. I'm happy with that. If I go back to 2003, where our tax rate was $1,233 per hundred thousand, today it's 923. Keeping our township affordable is important, not for for everybody, but it's really particularly important for the our seniors and those that perhaps have lost their jobs in the thoughts of uh, uh, Hershey or Rita Regional, and now have to have two jobs to maintain the same income. So keeping our township affordable for everybody is certainly important. 50% of our population will be over 50 within five years. Many of them on fixed incomes. So the long-term goal is to keep our township affordable. That's one of my goals. Dealing with our seniors' needs, uh, keeping the environment. We have closed waste sites when we still had capacity simply to prevent the leachate flowing into the lakes and the issues of the waterways. And we all know that you cannot put waste in the ground and not somewhere down the road have a problem with leachate or methane gas, whatever having impacts. We made that decision. I'm proud that the council made this decision. And I'm, you know, that's something we have to continue on because the environmental issues are so important to our water quality, drinking water, as well as our lake quality water, and keeping our township financially stable, not only tax-wise, but on our infrastructure investment. We had 2002, we had 18% of our roads hard surface. Today we're up to 55. We have to get to 70%. So many of our residents now are full-time residents, where they were seasonal before, they're full-time now. We have to provide, we have to buy emergency service and access. And I'm quite pleased that our program has been that in dealing with that. And I'm not sure whether that comment means I'm finished or whether I still have 20 seconds. So I didn't get that message clear. Uh, 20 seconds, hold on. I hope while I was asking that question, I get that added to my 20 seconds. I do want to. I As mayor, the immediate priority will be the 2015 budget. Um, one of the questions we have to answer before later, I have some answers in that, but I really firmly believe that we can hold our tax rate for our township. We have no control over education taxes. We have no control over the county taxes. Um, we, as a township, cannot afford to increase our tax rate. 
everybody says that it should because the price of gas is going up, the price of hydro is going up, but I believe that we can hold our tax rate. Next priority will be making sure that there's an open line of communication with the public and the staff and, and the council of Real Lakes Township. There's been a lot of talk that, that we're not open for business. We are open for business and don't forget that. We have some communications issues that we have to clean up that I feel strongly that that, that can be worked on and, and almost overnight they can be fixed. We have a good website that is being rebuilt as we speak. Uh, a lot of people are learning to use the internet and our seniors program that we had, they taught a hundred people the library system we have taught how to use the internet for some of our seniors to get on there and, and get to understand that. It's an information highway that, that, is, that is expanding every day. We're looking at the website and I hope that it's a nice, clean, easy to use, easy to understand and information loaded website. That, that is a, immediate goals that can be done within the next, I'm going to say, a year uh, budget. I hope that it will be finished in, in three months, but sometimes that doesn't happen. Um, and, and that would be my quick answer to what the immediate quick things are, that are going to happen in the township. Thank you. Well, similar to Rob, keeping our township affordable. I started off with that comment. That is one of the key issues. Uh, we must remember, I said we have the lowest tax rate in the United Counties of Leeds and Greville. And when you take into consideration, the next highest one has a casino that gets $1.6 million from the proceeds of the casino. I think we're doing very well at keeping our tax rate where it has been and achieve the accomplishments with the cooperation of council. I'm only one member of council. It's been council that's been the cooperative group that got the projects and got our township to where it is today. I certainly, as we look at where we have to go, we have to look at our bridges. We have a mandate. We, we all know our infrastructure is crumbling. We have to make sure that our bridges, our roads meet the requirements. The size of council, that's one issue that I'll be putting back on the table. I put it on the table twice now in the last, since 2000, in 2002 and 2013. We have to deal with that and we have to meet the needs of what you feel you need as representation, and I hope that we would have public meetings in that regard. We have to meet the accessibility requirements. We certainly have to look at our, at our uh, environment issues. We can do a little bit better at our environmental handling of our waste in Portland, the transfer station. While we have door-to-door -door pickup, and I'm extremely proud of that, we can, look, we can do our handling just a little bit better because we're now moving that waste from point A to point B in the most economical way we can get to move that in dollars and cents. The cheapest dollar per, per ton is going to be a part of our answer to keeping our costs down. We have to uh, our county official plan. That's going to have an impact on all municipalities in the United Counties of Leeds and Greville, and particularly in Rito Lakes where we have so much water, and so many lakes and rivers. So we're going to have to be very careful as we're going forward, and again, being a warden, I have some in, input and some very close uh, involvement with that one. The OPP cost it. We have to keep. We have to get a handle on that. We just received our papers this week. I have a copy of it there. And anybody wishes to see it after the meeting, we have to know where that. There's a big, huge increase in costing and policing coming to us in real lakes, and we have to satisfy ourselves on the type of service we want as we move forward in the next term of office. Youth needs meeting the needs of our youth. Uh, we've all heard of the challenges on the Rideau Canal. We've heard the water quality. We've heard the water quality in Portland. There's going to be a meeting set up very shortly with the, with the uh, industry in Portland in order to be able to explain to you the conditions that exist there from a federal level and from a provincial level in regards to water quality. And also to meet the needs of the province now. Because now to get a, a grant under the province, you have to now fill in this form to get a pre-application before you can actually get an application in for a grant. And I'll read it to you. Uh, please, uh, please review each of the tools and indicate whether your not your community has utilized, explored it, them as an option to finance this project. You are invited to provide details. Debt financing, yes or no. There it is right there, folks. And if you say no, you have not got a hope in hanging out getting a federal or provincial grant. I'll, I'll talk more about that after my next 20 seconds is up. Thank you very much. Donald. But the next 
council is going to face before they even sit down in their chairs on the 1st of December is the impending financial superstorm that's going to hit them. The OPP cost that we referred to, $256,000 more than last year, 19% increase. The cut in financial uh, uh, grants from the Ontario government is going to affect the county 8% of its budget. Our current debt, which is in between 9 and 11 million, has to be addressed. And in the meantime, we have to set up reserves to meet emergency measures. So, it's not an easy task for these people that are going to sit in these chairs to address all these issues. And in the meantime, we have to keep it affordable. What I'm hearing from the cottagers and other Taxpayers is are maxed out on their taxes. It's about four times as much to live on the lake as on a residential area in the township. And in the meantime, we all have to cope with these energy costs and hydro costs and our fuel transportation costs in the township. And you can't cut back on your infrastructure your roads and your bridges. It, it ha it, it, the, the plowing and the mowing and all the maintenance, it never stops. So you just can't stop one on one side of it and dwell on the other side. So these people have a big job to do the 1st of December and it's going to hit them smack right in the face. So choose wisely on what you choose for council. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Next question, we're going to start with Ron Holman. What skills do you have that would indicate you are the best person to lead council? Well, I guess going back to when I left school in 16 and went into the uh, into business, if you want to go back that far, I won't tell you the year then because you can't put it all together. But uh, anyways, many years ago, uh, I, I've been able to gain management experience and practical experience and most of all business experience from my 20 uh, some years in, in being a business in the retail lumber business. But anyway, I think my previous clients were out there. Certainly, uh, I, uh, I gained a lot of experience on that. And I learned the hard knocks and I learned the financial requirements, which again, when you're in business and when you're in politics, there's a great relationship between the two. Remember that your council is really like the board of directors in a business. We set the policy, staff carry out the policy. So we set the direction and it's up to staff. And you better have a council that sets the correct direction for staff to follow. Right? From a financial aspect, from a procedural, from a bylaw, the whole process that meets your needs because our needs are changing. I indicated before that the age of demographics of our municipality are shifting. 18% of the Canadian population is over 50, I'm sorry, over 65. We're going to be 50% over 65 in just a, in, in four years, five years. So we have that changing shift that we must need, and I think my personal experience, both from right from starting at 16 in the line of business, and when I started to work for R.L. Crane in Ottawa after coming out of Ottawa Technical High School, getting experience there for many years in all levels of management as well as production, Getting into my own business and taking a business from basically two employees to 120 employees with three stores in Perth, Perth Smith Falls, and, uh, and uh, where was the other one? You can forget where the other one was. <laughs> anyway, I should know it after all these years. But anyway, we had three stores. And you know, when we ended up that store, I, my greatest relationship and my greatest friendship were the 6,000 customers that we had on our base, and they were many of our residents today. And building those customers up in a personal relationship with great communications has been part of my goal and has been my part of my goal while I've been in politics. And I think I can continue that in the future and look forward to it by serving for the next four years. Thank you very much. Thank you. Donald Wills. I, I think you have to be a team leader. And you have to guide your council while well, not being a dictator doing so. You have to formulate all the positions. They grew up in different circumstances than the rest of us. I mean, we have to congeal into one, one train of thought. 
which is for the betterment of the council. And if you don't win the first battle, there's lots more to come in the next four years. I think that's what everybody has to learn when they come to council. As for myself, my experience, I started out from high school with my father and my, in my dad's construction business and I worked entirely in the tourist industry in South, South Burgess and all along the lakes. That's all we ever did. And then we expanded from there and I got into uh, traffic control down on the Queensway for two years and uh, we went all over Ontario. You have men underneath your yourself that are out on the road working and you have to put your trust in them. So being in business it's an ever-changing battle. Conditions change, the climate change, your clientele changes and your, and your core, the core of what you do changes every year. So you have to adapt and you always have to make a profit or you won't be there and you have to maintain your equipment and you have to replace it and you have to have a family life at home. And this is what the people on council should remember. You're going to be spending a lot of time at council chambers and leaving your family when you should be with them. And there's a lot of adjustment for the wives and the children while you're doing that. So with all this experience, uh, you, you have to have it when you're leading your group of people and maintain their respect. Thank you. Thanks, Donald. Rob Dunfield? I believe the leadership qualities that follow me is for the... I own Rob's Corner Garage and Store on Highway 15 in Portland. Uh, 16 years. Uh, ran it very successfully. Had full-time employees had a ton of student employees. And if you can handle student employees for 16 years and not go crazy, that shows some kind of leadership skills. And I sold it very happily. I've done my 16 years of nights and days as a mom and pop operation. Took a couple years off and painted the house, did all that kind of leadership stuff that I hadn't done for 16 years. and Got a lot of brownie points on that one. And then, luckily, I, would, I, I took on a job as the general manager of Rear Lakes Golf Country Club. And at that time, they were in severe financial problems. It was one of the reasons that, and you remember, Frank Perrin hired me to do the job. And since then, I turned it around. It's a very profitable, nice place to go. And I think that's the leadership that we need, that financial business leadership that will get us through the next four years. That's one of the reasons I believe I have the ability to be the mayor of this township. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. And now we'll get into the questions for all of the candidates. And we're going to start at this end and then cascade down. So Donald Wills, you're first. The first question is on something near and dear to all of us, property taxes. What is your view on property taxes? Should they be increased, decreased, or held where they, held where they are? And please explain your position. We're into a good subject here that really affects all of us. I don't think we can go for less with all the increases I just mentioned beforehand, the OPP, the cutbacks in lieu of payments from the provinces, province, they're in dire shape. They're going to keep cutting back. It's going to affect the county. It's going to affect us. We're going to have to finance more of our infrastructure ourselves if we can't get the grants. And maybe, so it's a delicate, I, what I'm hearing from the voters is they're maxed out. And I can understand that. So it's a delicate balance. It has to be a consensus of council. Uh, I can lead them along on what I think should happen, but we have to formulate a plan and that's the first thing they do on the 1st of December. So, increase? I hope not, but 
don't rule it out. Uh, there's going to have to be some adjustments in what we do 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 on the township. I don't think the township can be everything to everybody anymore. So there's some things we're going to have to cut back on to keep other things going. So, thank you. Doug did. My comment is, I'm like everybody else, I don't like property taxes, but we got to pay them anyway. I'm, uh, I believe that Donnie is quite correct. I think that the biggest challenge in the new council is setting taxes, appreciating that people after last winter reached into their pocket a lot for energy costs and so on, they just don't have the dollars and cents to really take a hit on increased taxes. But yet, you think about it, we plowed more roads last year, we probably uh, paid more for other buildings and so on, and energy costs like everybody else. So the challenge is to try and find that balance. And as the mayor has said, everybody else says, OPB costing model is changing, the grants are changing, it's going to be the biggest challenge, I believe, faced by you, uh, the taxpayers, and your council. Uh, there's no do two ways about it. The good thing is you have an opportunity in the budgeting process to be part of that and tell us what you want, what you need, and what you feel is important. So that's, you know, it doesn't only really follow the council, but we got to listen to you, the people. Uh, there's a question later on that addresses that issue of core and non-core items, but we need as a council to hear from you what you feel that core and non-core items are. And I think it's, from what I've heard and seen, there's a major difference from, say, the South Elms Award to the South Crosby Award of what you've had in the past and probably what you expect in the future. Kathy Livingston? taxpayer as well and I don't like to see the taxes uh, to be increased but it could be a possibility and uh, we do have a lot of services within our township that I really enjoy for example we've got the garbage pickup fire and rescue we've got our policing beautification recreation centers and with all the the infrastructure improvements that need to be done within the township. We are an old township, we're over 200 years old, so there's a lot of things that are now in need of being repaired, and like the roads, for example, the township buildings that we've had, equipment, things are going to need to be replaced and, and get us prepared for the future coming up. And with, as everybody's mentioned, the new policing policy, I mean, we do need our police forces here to keep us protected, so those are some things that are going to happen. I do hope that we can make some uh, changes to some of our processes, perhaps that uh, you review what is going on, and then you can try to see if you can cut some of your spending costs that we do have, but that'll be, as I say, a challenge for the new council coming up. Paula <coughs> Banks. I think the most important question that we can ask this year is what do people want and how much are they willing to pay? I think we must explore all options before raising taxes. Like Mr. Dunfield, I feel that we can stay at the current level for the next four years. I would need more information to make an educated assessment, but raising taxes and borrowing more money will be my last resort. We must cut costs, find revenue opportunities, and build a bigger tax base through responsible development. As wages in this area go from high manufacturing more towards minimum wage, we simply cannot afford to keep spending the amount we are. Each of the last four years, this council has raised our taxes. It takes a lot of effort and hard work not to. Thank you, Paula. Rob Dunfield? When you get checked, well, 37% goes to the township, 39% to the county, and 24% to the school board. 
Our current tax rate is $352.88 per $100,000. Typical home assessment will go up 3.5% next year, which was phased in through impact. In real growth, our homes and cottages, our new homes and cottages, will see $50,000 to $60,000 worth of new money in our tax base. If we take our assessment of a revenue neutral, so the taxpayers aren't paying any more into the bottom line of the township, the township should be able to hold our property tax levels at 214 levels. The OPP billing increase is $220,000. I firmly believe by sharpening our operating expenditures, which in 2006, the budget was $7 million. In 2014, our operating budget was $9.5 million, an increase of $2.5 million, approximately 35%. This has to get under control. If elected, I will have a full service reviews of all departments and will curtail unnecessary expenditures to reduce spending. With these savings, we could make up the extra that the OPP is going to cost us and we can hold our taxes. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Claire Dunaway. Uh, hi, I'm Claire Dunaway. I'm running for council in South Cross Speed Board. Uh, I don't think anybody is going to get up here and, and say that they want to raise taxes. Um, but uh, I don't think that they need to go up. I think that uh, the township needs to tax based on the essentials and a little bit extra. So I don't know that now is a good time because we're at 75% of our maximum borrowing level that we should be taking on new projects. Um, and all along, my I've been campaigning on uh, a policy of, of growth because we wouldn't be having a lot of these sort of emotional um, proclamations about concerns over debt and concerns over rising taxes if our population wasn't shrinking because we're an aging population for the most part, our schools are getting emptier, so they cost more to run as well. Um, so that, you know, a third of the taxes that goes towards the schools isn't gonna be used as efficiently. We don't have control over a lot of the other costs, but if, uh, if we had more young people that were staying in the community, that were moving to our communities, uh, if we had fewer vacant homes in the villages uh, where we can concentrate services as well, where it costs less to deliver services, then I don't think that a lot of the concerns that we have would be concerns. Um, and now probably is not the time to take on new projects to expand low-income housing. And I think that we should also be looking at uh, taking advantage of community groups and people who are really engaged and using our dollars really efficiently by uh, using them towards groups like the Red Rick, the uh, Alvin Area Heritage Society which didn't get any money from the township this year. Um, and they are volunteer run, so they have really cheap labor. <laughs> Thank you, Claire. Ron Holm. Well, certainly, I, I think you would, uh, we'd all have to agree that raising taxes are the last push of any council. But we have to face reality. And again, as, as Rob has indicated, we get 37 cents we collected. All the taxes you pay for property taxes, we collect seven six million nine hundred and ninety thousand. Seven million two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars goes to the county for ambulance service, long-term care, things like that. Four thousand four hundred and fifty one four million four hundred and fifty one thousand goes to education. And what you're going to have to watch is the education portion. Because if you go back to the provincial Don Drummond report, the recommendation to the province was to raise that. That's been a static number for a number of years. And as assessments went up, that number, the amount collected, stayed, stayed static. Don Drummond, in his report to the province, said there's an avenue for the province to gain to try and reduce their $10 billion deficit. So that's the number you're going to have to watch. Our $337, or uh, the taxes we raised, the $352 per 100000 that we have. I'll tell you that one of our neighboring municipalities that touches our boundaries, I won't mention the name of them, now you can use your own imagination as to what it is, it's that presently, for own use purposes, $667. If we were to have that same tax rate, we would be bringing in $6 million more from you, the taxpayers. So we have a very low tax rate, and I alluded to that at the start. It's my commitment to keep that as low as possible and to seek every possible grant that we can possibly get. Today we got notice at the county that we are going to receive another million two over the next three years as part of the $50 million in grants 
uh, which the province announced in their last budget. And, and, you know, we're going to get something for that for our own municipality. The announcement wasn't out this afternoon, but certainly uh, I'm looking forward to that. Keeping our taxes low has been my commitment for, since 2000, and it's my commitment to you in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Robert Taylor. Well, thank you. This is uh, pretty interesting for me. I've had a great four years. Too loud? No. I've had a great four years, and I was really happy when I got elected. It was an interesting experiment in life. I have been living here for 35 years. And one of the great things about, like the boat Rita Lakes, is one of the things they had low taxes. As a practicing artist, keeping my costs low has always been a primary interest to me. Because any time I'm not spending creating art, I'm wasting my life. So, and I'm not making art, I want to spend my time helping those around me. And what I found in the past four years is that the township has become a lot more responsive to people's needs. Their communication skills have improved a lot. And these are all things I found very important after all the time I've lived here. Is that I had found that at some point the township had become separate from the people that it represented. It had, no longer, it had lost some of its abilities to listen to people. And for one thing, that's what I do, is I really love to listen to people. Low taxes, we all want low taxes. There's nobody in the world that doesn't pay taxes. Taxes have been part of the human race since the beginning. Right back to the caves, you had to do something to what, that was part of your obligation to the social structure you lived in. So taxes are not unusual and they're not mean. They are means that as a society we can live comfortably together and get the services and things we need. And for that, we've done for the past four years, we borrowed money. We borrowed money as an investment to save money so that the services can be continued. And I'm very optimistic in the future that we will use our creative resources to actually solve things as they came along. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Brad Banks. Good evening. <clears throat> I truly believe that we can hold, put a hold on our property taxes as they are at the moment. Um, I really believe if we push development in the South Crosby Ward and throughout Rideau Lakes, that it'll make a huge difference. And by doing that, we need to take a serious look at planning and development services um, that we have currently in place. For us to grow, that is a must, in my, in my opinion. Um, I would also uh, like to say that um, we can, if we put a hold on the line of borrowing, then on the line of borrowing, then our taxes should go up. It's, it's, nobody wants to do it, uh, people have said this earlier, but I think that would be a last resort, in my opinion, for me. Is, uh, we exhaust all our other options before that ever happens. Thanks, Brad. Linda Carr? Good evening, everyone. Well, I don't want the taxes to go up either. However, I can't see how we can go without increasing it because life goes on and the cost keeps going up. And who are we to say, well, we won't do this this year because we don't have the money. And I have been approached by so many people by saying, how come this road wasn't done? How come this wasn't done? Why are you doing this? Why are you not doing this? Be realistic. We have to do this. We have to keep going ahead. How much I would not like to spend money, but we have to increase a little. We have to. Because if we don't do it this year, then we'll have to do it next year. Because it's just a catch-up thing. It's like life. I, you, you've got to pay. And it's, you are our people. You tell me, and I will do what I can do. But lately, all I've heard is complaining about roads and this and that. And if we don't have the money to do it, I'm afraid, that load of gravel, we can't afford that. I mean, we've gone through this before. We're on a budget. We have to stay within the budget. We've got to stay within the budget. Well, if you you got a budget, folks, I can't come with another load of gravel because it's not in the budget. 
We on council all know that. So, I hate to say this, but it has to go up in order to live. So, that's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. The next question, we're going to start with Doug Hood. Should Rideau Lakes Township be borrowing funds for capital projects? Please detail your position. <coughs> The, uh, the answer for is no. Unfortunately, there's, there's maybe a need to do that. Uh, we have what we've been able to identify is about $11.2 million of debt, 8.8 uh, .8 of which is capital improvements. Now there's a plan to pay it off and could be paid off by, 19, uh, by 2019. But my reading is people don't want more debt. Now, why did I say, yes, you may have to? Well, what's just recently happened is the Phelpsville Maintenance Center has been declared unusable. Short-term agreement has been made to go to MTO at Crosby. Is it going to be workable? Maybe for the short term. Long term, you probably have to build a new facility. And that means you may have to borrow some money. The good news right now, it's low cost. The actual question was about whether I believe that this uh, hard surfacing is good money being to uh, borrow for. My answer is no. I believe that we need to have life cycle costing comparing hard surfacing by chip and tar to pavement. I've seen five roads that have been rebuilt because they didn't have the right basis to the right start to them. Uh, the other road I use as comparison would be the Plum Hollow Road. Been a hard pavement, they've got 30 years of life out of it. So let's put our money where we can best get the value for the investment. Thanks, Doug. Uh, Kathy Livingston. As I previously mentioned, the township is we're quite old and we have, do have infrastructure issues. So repairing our roads is one of the things that needs to be done. And any time that uh, the mayor has alluded that the grant applications that you have to send out and, and get applications for and get approval for, you need to be able to have money up front. You need to be able to have the work done and the payments made on that. And sometimes if you don't have the money in your accounts, you need to borrow. If the rates are low and I don't see an issue with borrowing, I know we have debt right now that needs to be paid off. Within the next 10 years, I believe, or 2019, they'll be paid off if we didn't borrow anymore. But there are some times that you may have to. And if we need to have, uh, like the, the hall in, uh, or the library in Elgin, just had to have a roof replaced because it's leaking. So there's lots of things that come up, like the, the uh, um, maintenance building in Phillipsville. So there's things that need to be done. And if you haven't got the power to be able to go out and, and uh, borrow as you need it, then I don't know how you're going to get the money and things aren't going to get done. Now I know that uh, um, a past councillor, Mr. Stedman, I believe is here, told me that if the roads are in good shape, people are happy. And I believe that is true because I've had calls about the Plum Hollow Road, which has been paved over 30 years, which is in need of uh, restructuring. And the Daytown Road has been done a few times and it still needs to be fixed. So there are things that need to be done and uh, I uh, think that that's uh, one of the things that could be done. Of course, it's only as a last resort, but you need to be able to do it if you have to. Paula Banks. I actually find it quite humorous that a couple of people have talked about open communication and the low taxes because as new councillors, uh, the current council and staff would not tell us how much we owe. They refuse to. So I had to base my answer on 2013. And as Mr. Holman stated, we do have 730 square kilometers of area with 10,000 people. We also had $9.1 million in debt. I have gone through the website and I got the six closest townships to our area and population. 
and the next highest debt is $4 million. I've also talked to two different mayors and CAOs. They have told me that the question of debt is on the questionnaire, but no council member knows the weight of that question. So I think that they are borrowing money in order to keep taxes low. And I also think in this day and age, when a council or staff members refuse to tell a taxpayer how much debt we are in, there is something wrong. Thanks, Paula. Rob Dunfield? <coughs> the question was on Warren. In December 13th, financial statements for the township by Brett Burns, our accounting firm, and which is on our township web website and it can be looked at at anyone in the Treasury Department, our debt was 8286000 $8, This does not include, which is in our financial statement, a $1.39 million liability for post-closure of landfill sites that have been closed. This does not include $2.4 million loan that Council approved for 2014. This total debt is just a little bit over $12 million. These figures do not include $500,000 that we owe on the Alvin Seniors residence, $300,000 that we borrowed to do electrical services at Lower Beverly Lake Park, which are being paid back from the revenues. That's good borrowing money. I was one of the members of council who voted on borrowing additional funds in 2014. I have listened to you, and I've learned that we do have a problem. I would agree to borrowing if it was a grant position only, where the feds or the province were providing a substantial portion of the funds. Our debt to service ratio is too high. The main disadvantage of borrowing, our revenues are dedicated to debt repayments and are not available for other uses, which we heard some of them earlier. The municipality with low debt payments has more flexibility to respond to unanticipated events buildings falling apart, trucks falling apart. That's my feeling on board, and that's where I sit and stand. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Claire Dunaway? Uh, in general, I guess maybe this would be a different answer, but right now I don't think that the township should borrow more money for capital projects unless it's for an emergency or an unforeseen uh, repair. The uh, debt seems to have turned into a pretty sore subject during the, the elections, and uh, I just thought I would mention that to keep in mind uh, that per capita, it's uh, it's less than $1,000 per person, if that makes it sound any better. Uh, whereas Ontarians, we owe about $21,000 each uh, as, as residents of this province. Um, the borrowing question seems to be a matter of principle, you know, do we go into debt ever or not? Uh, because if you remember back to civics class, which I still can, uh, the, uh, the municipal governments aren't really allowed to carry much debt legally. Uh, so we're at, we're at about 75% right now of what we can have. So really it's a matter of management one way or the other because you can't rely on debt to a large degree uh, to fund your activities as a municipality. You have to have good management. Um, so I think that you know, we, uh, we probably could look back and, and see some projects that didn't need to happen or didn't need to happen yet. And uh, going forward, I know the township has, uh, for example, has purchased uh, half of the lot next to the library because they want to expand the parking lot. That's probably something that can wait. I don't think that Elgin needs more parking, uh, more, par more pavement. I think it probably we can do better with parks. <laughs> um, and uh, as well, the, uh, the new seniors residences, which uh, are, I guess, more low-income residences than specifically for seniors on Harry Seeley Road, those are slated to be expanded, and I don't think that's a wise move with a uh, high vacancy rate in the existing housing. Thank you, Claire. Ron Holman? Boy, I need two hours on this subject. The, uh, First of all, let, let me say this, to uh, Claire gave you an example, if you want to for Canada, that every person, every man, woman, and child in Canada owes $32,858. We're less than a few hundred, so that's uh, our perspective. I, I do want to point out that the, uh, when we're doing budgets, there's three things to take into consideration. Must have, need to have, and nice to have. And that's the way every budget should be prepared. Must-haves, you really don't have any choice on it. And when we look at the must-haves in our budget, 
fire, policing, the OPP costs, those are fixed costs. Should we be borrowing for those? We should never borrow for operating costs, and we never do. And I want to make a statement here that's a little bit, uh, just a clarified point, uh, at the level of debt. And this is as of about, uh, within the last 24 hours, uh, the loan balance, as of we speak right now, is $6.7 million. Plus $300,000 for the lower Beverly Lake Park, which would put the new uh, hydro infrastructure in, which is being paid back by the lower Beverly Lake Park, and about another 400000 or thereabouts for the Elgin Seniors Project, which is being paid back from the income on the rentals and is fully sufficient without touching your tax base. And remember, those units were built from a $1.44 million grant that we got free from the province. So those units don't cost, but they're providing a killing need. I want to make one clear point. Right now, our payment, and we have a very rapid payment, because any funding we do must have a payback, must be used for infrastructure, must be operational savings, and must be a quick payback. And right now, our OMPF funding, and it, which it comes from the federal government and the provincial government, and our gas tax is a million and thirty-six thousand dollars, and our payment is a million six hundred and four. The payments for our capital borrowing does not impact your taxes. One item is paid for from rents. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Robert Taylor. <coughs> Never like borrowing money because it's like being in jail. <laughs> Not much different. The more money you owe, the less you can do. But the fact of the matter is that the township we've been very careful about when we borrow the money. We <laughs> borrowed the money the same way a business would borrow money. You borrow money to make money. We borrowed money to create infrastructure savings, so in the long run, those in savings will pay for that money that we're borrowing. That means the service that the residents get, you can get that today rather than waiting for them in the future. And it won't cost you any more taxes because we are very careful about how we borrow and when we borrow. And for that's one thing I've always respected this council for, for its very business-like approach to these kind of financial decisions. Because one thing I've always been afraid of is anything that would increase taxes and borrowing, if it ever did that, you make life impossible for those who don't have a lot of money those seniors on fixed incomes, all the, the young families. You want to keep your property taxes as low as possible so that they can afford to live their lives, find their jobs, and make a living for themselves. And borrowing, as long as it's done that for investment purposes that will benefit the community, I don't think is a bad form of borrowing whatsoever. Thank you, Robert. Brad Baines? I would like to see the new council hold the line on borrowing. Um, it is very difficult to get information, which should never be, but I did happen to come across and find out that it cost us $2 million a, $2 million a year just to maintain the roads we have now. Um, and I feel that we, if we hold the line and get our debt down, yes, there's going to be emergency stuff that will pop up, that will happen, but do it through grants so that it isn't costing you in the long run. Thanks, Brad. Linda Carr. I can't believe what I'm hearing here. First of all, I always thought when we borrow, you know, basically, um, it's our future. We're borrowing towards our future. And our seniors building down there that houses all these seniors down there, they are so thankful that we have this here. And I'm so thankful that we have it there. And it really, it's self-sufficient. And I, it has nothing to really to do with us. And uh, Delta Park, again, it's another I issue that it's self-supporting. I'm also under the impression that the township, basically, uh, when we borrow money, it's usually at two to three, three or four percent. Nothing higher. I can't see anybody in business. When you can get money at 3%, why would you not borrow it? I mean, my goodness, if you're in business at 3%, tell me, 
how many people, if you needed a tractor and you can get it at 3%, don't tell me you're going to say you can't, you won't buy it at 3%, and it's locked in on top of that. I mean, we have fantastic staff over there, and they are telling us what exactly they have done. They've told us over and over and again that it is locked in at, say, 3% at over the period of the, the loan. And yes, I do agree that we will have to, uh, when grants are available, we have to get prepared. So folks, that's, we have to borrow. If you have to borrow, you have to borrow. But hopefully, we gotta keep going forward. We can't go backwards, I'll tell you that. If you're in business, you have to do what you have to do. Thank you. Thank you, Donald Wills. Do we borrow or do we not borrow? We can argue back and forth all night whether it is 9 million, 11 million, whatever it is. It has to be paid at some point. And their interest rate's going to stay low. No, they're going to go up. How much, we don't know. Are they going to go to 29% like they did in the 80s? And kill us all? We have to be careful <coughs> how much we borrow and if it is fixed, so be it. But if we all had the information that some people had here tonight, a question was asked last week of what our township debt was. It was refused. Another person sitting here asked the question on Monday from the CAO. The answer was no. Township staff are prohibited from reporting research or analysis work on their fourth of any candidate in an election. So most of us came here tonight not knowing what the debt repayment charge was, not knowing what we owe today, and not knowing what we're going to owe at the end of the year. So do we borrow? If we have a calamity you know, in Portland with the sewer and water, we have an emergency. What are we going to do? So that's the big question for council. It's a looming time bomb. So do we borrow? If we have to, but we have to cut back on other projects if we're going to do it. We just can't keep going into debt and debt and debt. Thank you. The next question was starting with Kathy Livingston. How would you foster and, faci and facilitate a culture of cooperation, helpfulness, and respect in the dealings between the administration of the township and its constituents? Well, personally, um, I've always found the staff and the councillors and uh, everybody to be very, very favorable for anything that I've asked for. And, but then I have a personality where I get along with a lot of people, so that might help. But through my leadership roles during, the, uh, during my work uh, over the years as supervisor, I've learned that if there's a problem, that you try to get to the root cause of it, and you talk to the people who are having an issue, and you go to the township, whoever's in, they're having a the problem with, you find out from their boss, or CAO actually, and you try to fix the problem so it doesn't get out of hand. Sometimes there's uh, issues because people are hearing other things that are going on that may not actually be true and the only way to find it out is to go get right at it and see what's going on and see if you can help with that. But as far as anything that I've had any problems, they've helped me with it so I'm very pleased with that. So and I hope that does continue. There has been some changes through the uh, at the staff and I find that they're very helpful so anytime that if anybody uh, needs help, you can talk to your counselor, and they will do what they can to help you. Thanks. Thanks. Paula Banks. I do agree with Kathy that the staff changes have been nothing but an improvement. I think the goodwill would go a lot further if we had more transparency, starting from the top right down through all of the staff. I feel many times that the staff are put in the middle 
because they're told not to give it information. I think they're micromanaged and they're afraid to trust their own judgment sometimes. Under the current administration, we cannot get simple answers questions, such as the debt. Or I simply ask how many employees the township had. We cannot answer that. To make, to make matters worse, when council turns a blind, blind eye to repeated complaints of a few individuals and they do nothing. The building and planning departments were a perfect example of this. Council should have taken action, but chose not to. I think with Nathan as the new building inspector, we would all agree it is 100% better. But it should have been addressed previously. We need transparency, accountability, and open communication in order to build better relationships between all stakeholders. Rob, thank you. Great question, communications. Sometimes people don't like to hear what is said in our building department. You have to remember, the staff are the policemen between ourselves and the Ontario Building Code and the public. And this is the same with our official plan. Sometimes you don't like the answer. What will you listen? I don't know. An open dialogue with members of staff Council and the Mayor is imperative to help easy, ease any confusion caused by this in the past. An open website, you should have all the information that is not confidential on it at any time. For example, my expenses will be online at any time and you won't have to go through the Freedom of Information Act to see them. We should have nothing to hide. I propose town hall meetings to meet with constituents in an informal setting on a regular basis. Expand our builder information nights. I think there's a communication problem there. We have a great brochure that's put out twice a year. This is great for getting information out to the taxpayers. And this is actually 9,000 vote twice a year, so almost everyone gets one. And that's at no cost to the taxpayer. Our calendar is a great hit. Comes out once a year, lots of information, and we could put more information on that. We've had tremendous response from our seniors with their iPad training that went on, and we should expand this at every opportunity we get through the libraries. And this should get the communications from the township to the people. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Claire Dunaway. Well, I uh, personally would say that uh, I found that the township staff and councillors have always been really easy to deal with and very informative. Uh, but certainly could always have a better relationship between the township and residents. Um, the staff, as far as I'm concerned, uh, as was, was said, you know, in some cases they're just relaying information, uh, and that's their job. They should all be experts in what they are doing, and they should be experts at communicating their knowledge to us. Um, if anybody ever has an issue with, with the township, with staff or administration, uh, they should be able to use their, their counselor as a resource. And so the communication between the residents and counselors also should be amazing. <laughs> and uh, I know the counselors generally, I think, are very available, and I would certainly intend to be as well. Uh, the building and planning departments in the past have been uh, an issue for a lot of people. And uh, it sounds like things are getting better, and obviously there needs to be some diligence and in keeping an eye on things and making sure that uh, you know, everything is being communicated and that the township is uh, being a cooperator and an enabler and not just a regulator. Um, the website, I think that the tendering of the website right now is going to be a really great opportunity to redevelop uh, our online presence and make it really accessible and full of information and simple um, for residents and for visitors so that we can have uh, as many people who want to know more about the Rideau Lakes know as much as they want to know about the Rideau Lakes because uh, nobody else is going to do it for us. I know the Wikipedia page for a while said Fort Farr was a ghost town. Uh, so <laughs> I think that uh, we should improve our online communications as well. Thank you, Claire. Ron Holt. I think one of the, uh, 
one of the greatest assets a municipality has, it does not just be the lakes, is, is their staff. You know, we talk about asset management plans and the whole package, but the biggest asset you have are your, are your staff. But we have to enforce the building code. We have to, that's, that's, we don't, there's things in the building code we don't like, but yet we're legislated by the province of Ontario to, import, to enforce those. The same with the fire code and the list goes on. Uh, the staff, in my mind, has been go out of their way to help the public. There's always the odd situation where we have to say no, and Rob's alluded to that. But, but, it's, not, it's not nice for us. We don't like to say no. But we have to because of certain reasons, whether it be zoning bylaws, whether it be things that are imposed upon us from the conservation authorities or whatever the case may be. But we have to deal with that. But the way that it's conveyed is important, and that's what our staff specialize in. You know, and we hear, we always hear, it seems that a negative complaint always takes precedence of about 20 to 1 over, over a positive one. I received one today. Uh, I've been dealing with your township for over a year to get all the necessary permits and road allowance issues resolved. But this is dealing with two townships. Ours is one of them and its borders on another. During the time I have met with Mike Dwyer and also Brittany Mulhern, she has been amazing. Answering my questions and returning my calls. In fact, everyone at your township has tried to expedite this issue. I'm proud of that when I hear that type of statement. And that's an unsolicited comment. That was just a comment that came through today. And that's the type of staff that not just I, Rob and everybody else that's on council encourages staff to do. That's our commitment to you that that will happen. Thank you, Rob. Robert Taylor. The, the township uh, is actually just an extension of the community itself. The fact that there should be a problem communicating with it, to me, is unrealistic because it is simply the extension of it. all of us as individuals, all of us as groups, and at some point it's all put into a township form in which it's our needs are facilitated. So open and honest communications are based on trust, acceptance, and respect. So if we all respect each other, accept each other, our communications will be honest and straightforward. Now that doesn't mean that you're going to, that's going to solve all your problems with the building code. When I moved here, there was no building code. When I started building and renovating my church, I got a building permit that had no time stamp on it. I told the building inspector I would finish the building the day before I died because I wanted a lifelong project. And that was acceptable. Now I know that that is no longer true in the world we live today. Now we want to get the house in there in six months, and we want it on a mortgage, and we want the insurance. The township validates everything through the building code so that you can have access to insurance, you can have access to mortgages, and all that thing. Without the township building code, you wouldn't have access to any of those services. You would have to start building, having all the cash on hand. Thank you, Robert. Brad Banks. When I first uh, decided to run for council and started talking to people door to door, this was this was one of the, the first things that came to me that came at me was that um, Rita Lakes has a reputation of being difficult to deal with and overgoverned at times. I had a similar situation a few years ago uh, with the building, and I do believe that it's gotten better. It has, it is getting better, and I think the biggest problem is just miscommunication. I mean, we're talking about the internet. We need to get face to face and talk and deal with these issues in this form. And people, some people, do need more training on, uh, with the internet, and it's becoming better. Um, but still I think it's just a big issue just miscommunication and getting in front of people and getting the inf proper information out there. Thanks Brad. Linda Carr. I'm looking around thinking have I how many I know lots of you came to me and asked questions and I've got answers and I got back to you I uh, took the brave uh, approach here a couple years ago to have a coffee break with uh, some really intelligent godfathers of Elgin. Now talk about 
getting information, I'll tell you. Um, they were wonderful men. And they told me what I had to know. And I told them if what I had to tell them back if I was with truth or not. But I have been out there for the public 100% of the time. And if you guys can look at me straight in the eye and tell me I'm not, then that's okay. But, but right. Anyway, the township is constantly developed. We have a, sorry, I've got the wrong thing here. Uh, we have a, uh, the internet webpage, which is currently under review. We have a Facebook page, as well as text to application. And we have, pub, as we've already said, the Community and Leisure magazine, which is out twice. We publish a calendar. We also have the mayor writes a letter in our tax notice. Uh, basically, um, every councillor can be can be contacted. We all have email. We all have a phone, and mine is used a lot. And even as of last night, I had a complaint. Sick as I was, it's okay. I can take it. So we're only a phone call away. Call us. Donald Wills. To have better communication between the taxpayer and the administration, the mayor and his new council must address the senior administration of the township of how the township is going to be run. in strict guidelines. I found that the planning department is too combative. It's the building code of Rideau Lakes and not the building code of Ontario. And they dicker back and forth for up to a year and a half. I want to have a quarter basement, half a basement, no basement. And the lad is willing to put in a Brand new septic system. He's fully agreeable on a 1960s cottage. And this goes on and on. You can't have development in the township if you're going to fight with the taxpayers all the time. It has to be a cooperative effort. You can't be setting deadline obstacles in front of them all the time. Having said that the council must establish the guidelines for the administration, each administration department to operate, we're going to play a little Canadian football. Four downs and you're out. First down, second down, third down. I've written, communique is sent to the manager of what he's done wrong, and he corrects it after four downs find a new job. That's just the way it has to be. Thanks, Donald. Doug? I must be in the wrong township because a lot of what I've heard from these people at this table is not what I hear from people I've talked to around the township. I've heard a lot about protecting the planning and the building departments and their attitude towards the taxpayers and the builders. One of the issues, and Rob sort of alluded to it earlier, is as far as I can see is moving this township from a can't-do township to a can-do township because we've got to move to a can-do so that we can get some people to spend money building buildings and raise the taxes. They're not complaining about the future taxes, but they're complaining they can't do anything to get there. So we've got to get to the can-do position, guys. I learned a long time ago, a customer may come in and ask for a can of peas. Well, you don't have a can of peas, but if you do a little work with them, maybe you can sell them a can of corn and they go away happy. So maybe we can sell some more corn. So you just don't say no. I've had people tell me that they went in, asked about building a building, and they were told that they had to take a building down to start with, and then build a building. And the guy was told they had to take down a garage first. A week ago, I was at a location. A person apparently got into the township willing to spend $800,000 to buy a cottage. 
and he wanted to build a garage. And he was told, no. Hey, come on, we open up for business, we can get more tax dollars. That's as simple as that. I listened here about people. We built a house five years ago. I was told that I had a stop work order because there was a half inch hole in one of the joists. Look, one of my concerns is the township officials are don't understand and can't attest to what building. Think about the uh, stands that went into Lombardy a few years ago for the rodeo and we told them they couldn't use them. Left Lombardy for Parliament Hill. Come on. Thanks, Doug. The next question we're going to start with Paul Bank. Reporting, this arena should have more say in how it's run. Communities that have these halls must start to actively support them with money and time, much like Chafee's has done. As for cuts, once again, I say we need to find out from the public what is important to them and what they're willing to pay. And I, for one, think we should have public meetings in order to do that. Thank you. Rob Duffield. Non-essential spending. When you want to have a 0% increase in your budget, you don't have a lot of extra to spend. But as mentioned earlier, a full service review of each department. We should be able to save some money there. Then we'll have that little bit extra to put into those extra things. Lake associations. Uh, BRLA came to us a month ago and asked for some special monies for their funding. I think we should look at it. That's the highway on the water. Public boating and docking in, in all our townships. We have over 30 lakes. We should be able to put some kind of little boat dock in there to promote tourism, which in turn turns dollars in the township. Small things like the township, a couple of years ago, we gave some money to the Lake Association Fisheries, and they put in uh, approved new spawning beds over near their narrows locks. It's sometimes as simple as that. It was $500. More fish, more fishermen, more tourists. It all works together. We will never, ever have a Ford plant or a huge warehouse in Rita Lakes Township. So we have to make doing business a little bit easier. Open business is time for a change. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Claire Dunaway. Uh, I would imagine that uh, the first year of council is probably going to, the first year, year of the new term of council is probably going to be very busy because everybody's going to be fresh and they're going to have lots of ideas they want to jam through and things they want to get to, uh, but personally, my uh, my two things that I would uh, like to look at in the first year of New Council would be um, to return to giving the Elgin Area Heritage Society a little bit of money every year, um, and as well, I think that bale and bow wrap recycling would be a low or no cost recycling initiative that we could take on uh, that would make boaters and farmers happy. And uh, there are companies that will come and pick it up for free. Uh, if you have 10 bales, uh, 10 bale wraps, I know. So I could imagine as a township, if we, we could probably arrange something um, in the long term. I think that uh, hiking trails maybe in Elgin would be nice in the back of that uh, the property at, uh, where the Harry Sealy Road is, where the baseball diamond used to be, uh, since we don't have a park now in Elgin. And uh, I think that small business incentives uh, are something that we should look at so that we can encourage uh, self-sufficient self -sufficient villages, uh, villages that have, say, a gas station and a grocery store and uh, all the services that we would like to be able to rely on close to home instead of having to go to bigger cities, um, and which would then provide employment, obviously, as well for having small, small businesses and small employers. Um, I think that it would also be nice to look at uh, retirement and nursing homes. I know that's a provincial responsibility, but I think that with an aging population, it sucks to have to send all of our elders away to uh, cities if they want to live in a retirement or a nursing home. Thanks, Claire. Ron I mentioned earlier that we, there's three categories. The services provided by the township and every budget we should be going through them with that list just to make sure because there's the must-haves, the need-to-haves, and the nice-to-haves. We can cut in a lot of the nice-to-haves, but is that really the type of the township that you want to live in? We sunk probably, I don't know, two, three hundred thousand dollars into buying Hannah Park in Portland, but it gives equal one. 
We didn't have to do that. But yet that made the community the community. Helped to make it. Helped to stop the decline of that community. We just put money into the new borough docks. We've done this. Again, we didn't have to do that. But that's where you have the equal balance or the balancing act to say, what makes your township a township? What makes people want to come and live here? And that's what you have to, to look at. Services that we have to look at, I, I, I stressed now twice earlier tonight, the demographics of our age. We have to deal with the Indian society that we have. I'm a senior, and I know that there's many seniors here tonight. And we have to provide the facilities. I was very proud of the fact the council, and it's not myself, the council, you take the Elgin Municipal Complex, that was designed mainly to give our seniors a place, and there's apartments there and so on, where they could come and have a place to meet. There was no place in the old, other than the old red brick schoolhouse, which, you know, back before it was renovated, you could, you know, throw something through the water, so there's so many spaces in it. It wasn't a comfortable place. We built that. We borrowed $700,000 to build it, and everybody put their hands up and said, well, you shouldn't be borrowing for that. Look at it today. It's paid for, it's servicing the seniors, it's an emergency service facility that has backup power. And you know what, folks? We just made the last payment on it. And we now get $24,000 a year rent for the post office. That's the type of thinking that has to go on. We have to think inside the box because we want this community the best community in the region of Thank you, Robert. <coughs> for me to think about sometimes, but uh, in the long run, what we've done in this township has done a lot of positive things in developing things. I worked, at, years ago, I worked at the uh, nonprofit housing we had here in Elgin, when that was first designed to provide housing for young families. The people of the day thought that was good for the community, that we should have that housing available for young families as they're starting out so they could have low rent start building up their savings and then buy a house in the community that they, they are working and living in here. And so far, it's still here. And it's still being run, and it's still being, still has not cost us any money. It's paid for by itself through provincial monies. We put in the senior housing, which I worked in for years, for all the seniors, a beautiful place that was once again built for local people, borrowed with money, built with borrowed money and then paid for and has supplied service for what now? 25, 30 years it's been there. Providing places for people to live. And then we put in seniors housing just a while ago for people that had incomes under 24,000. People who didn't have a good indexed in pension at the end of their lives who are living on CPP and augmented income. Now they have a place to live in a local area. This township has constantly tried to produce things for the local economy and the local people and have always accomplished it in a very practical, low-cost manner and always done it in such a way that we could afford it because being affordable is probably the most important thing. One thing I'll just say in terms of the seniors that we the seniors are going to be our greatest benefit in this township in the future. We are one of the best places in Canada to live. We have low cost taxes. We have a good place to build and retire in. We have beautiful climate and we have lots of lakes and lots of services available. Thank you, Robert. Brad Banks. I would love to uh, have a meeting <clears throat> later on uh, after council has been elected and get your feedback on what you want. Um, but a couple of things that uh, come to my mind are uh, snow plowing and more specifically with the overlapping of the snow plowing. I mean, I think we've all have seen that and a huge, and uh, it's been mentioned earlier, uh, talked about the, the size of council and should it be cut in half or where, where do we stand on that? And there's tremendous savings there that we can put towards the debt if you do that. Um, that's all things that need to be brought up and uh, talked about with, with you present. Thank you, Brad. Lynn Carr. I have to do some soul searching to this one. I'm thinking way back, when we amalgamated I think the promise was that everyone was going to be equal. 
Our roads would be pretty well equal, like we would bring them up to standard. Uh, we were going to get garbage pickup. There was only garbage pickup in two places, and that was in Newborough and South Elmsley. And we managed to do that. So what we've done is basically everyone now has all got equal services. And I don't know how you would cut back on any of them because we need them all. And as far as, I, I, I don't know, everything we've got, we have to keep. We need the snow plows. There's definitely the snow plows. Uh, one of the main things that we lack here is for our seniors, is for transportation to get them from point A to point B. Because we're finding that even today with our, some of our seniors we couldn't, that don't get out. Our coffee break that we have on Friday mornings, we know some that can't come out. So we have to figure on how we're going to bring them out because there is no transportation. So we have to work on that. But what we have in place I think is fantastic. Um, I think we just have to keep going with what we have. But I don't think we can cut anywhere. And I remember the streets many years ago and we didn't have what we have today. It was just basically you got out there and you just kind of, sorry, we had people that did it, correct? If I'm not mistaken, they did it, the people themselves did it. So now we have staff that do it. So uh, we've came a long way. So I think we've done a fantastic job. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Donald Wills. Core services or non-core services. Four years ago when the mud started flying, I was called a 1950s candidate because I wanted to be fiscally prudent and offer the services to the residents in a responsible manner while regarding the ones that are less fortunate. We're going to have difficult times ahead in the next four years. We have to face that. Since amalgamation, I haven't had the service in the roads department for grading or snow plowing. Last year when I went in to do the VIA station, I had to plow my way out. When I come home, I had to plow my way in. We haven't seen the grader in our road and many other roads in the township, according to the township website, since the 19th of June. Are we getting better service? No. Are we getting equal service? No. We're not getting any service out in the rural area. The one, the, every taxpayer should have equal access. The snowplow routes are too long. 22 hours we timed it from the tax end of the snowstorm until the township cloud came on our road. The graders are sitting mothballed. They're not grading the roads this summer. When the buses get on, our roads been potholy all year. We have to supply equal services to the township and look after the less fortunate too, and it's a difficult struggle. So your input is needed. Thank you, Donald. Doug Good. I think the first item we got to start to do, determine, and it's only as uh, Donnie's suggesting, it's your input. Because I believe as I look around, there's a major difference of what people in South Elmsley think is core services, probably versus what people in South Crowdby think is the core services. And one of the classic examples, there's four community halls in South Crosby, one in South Elmsley. So what you expect and have expected as core services is a major difference. And I think you, the people, are going to have to have a major input into that. If you look at the 2014 summary of items on the township budget, there only seem to be three items that were non-core. Libraries, Heritage Advisory Committee, and Beautification. Hey, every one of those affects our quality of life and we have to get rid of them. So I think we have to take a closer look in other items that are supposedly core service and see what is hidden in there and do maybe a little bit of zero cost basting. Some of the other items I think we're going to have to touch very rapidly. 
treatment of sewage, uh, many may may not know it, you cannot no longer put uh, sewage on the farmer's fields. And as the, uh, the local communities, Perth and Smith Falls, stop taking the sewage from our area, we're going to have to figure out a way to address that issue. Uh, the, uh, and especially in a short time, probably because that's a major pullback on the Jubilee building in Delta. So we've got to address that. I also see the municipality working to find ways to keep seniors in our community. Hey, there's another little one I'd like to see. Some garbage cans in the community. Just to sort of say, you're welcome. Come and visit us. It's great for tourism. Anyway, there are some of the items that we have to look at. Core service and non-core service to figure out they are. Thank you. <coughs> Kathy Livingston. Hey, I'm from the village of Delta and have been all my life. And one of the things that um, I think we need in Delta, as it's been alluded, the Elgin complex, municipal you know, complex for seniors. Delta hasn't got a place, and I think there's one that is really needed, and that would help keep the seniors in our community so they don't have to leave, but they still can't live in some of the bigger homes. Another one of my issues that I would like to see is more daycare centers. If you have a young family and you want to try to trust somebody to look after your children, did you have to leave the community to, to go out to work? We need daycare centers, and I, there could be perhaps some um, partnership with the YMCA's or YWCA's that would help with that if we had the buildings to do it. Because I know it is a concern for young families, and it may entice them to come into the communities if they did have daycare. Another uh, project that we need to do, and that is to promote our township as a destination place where people can come to tour and visit, to eat. We need businesses, we need small businesses to come into our communities, home-based businesses, we need restaurants. We need a place for people to come and just be able to come here and, and have a <coughs> good time and then perhaps they might stay and want to uh, purchase one of the houses in Delta. There's quite a few for sale. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And the Jubilee Block, that's right. Delta has gone through a community, we're doing a community improvement uh, project, and that is with the help of the planning department uh, from the township. And we're trying to get some economic development plans going on in the community. And it's not just Delta, we have Portland, we have all the other little communities. We need to be able to sustain ourselves so we have the future uh, for people to come, visit, or come and live. So. Thank you, Kathy. Um, we're running out of time. Um, I'd like to do one more question before we have the closing remarks, but I'm going to give you one minute because this question is a short one. Um, are you in favor of moving council meetings to the evening at 7 so as to give taxpayers a better chance to attend? They cannot attend with earlier meetings. Yes or no, and if no, please explain. And Rob, you're up first. Yes, I don't have a problem with all moving council meetings to 7. If people would come, we'd certainly enjoy to have that, and it would be a council decision, so the, the nine of them can make that decision, but I don't have a problem with it at all. Thanks. Thank you, Rob. Claire Gunning. Uh, I know that certainly having later council meetings would have made it a little easier for me to attend them uh, over the past uh, little while since I've been uh, trying to run for council, uh, so I wouldn't support that. Thank you, Claire. Ron Holman. When we set up the uh, timings for the meetings, we have two committee of the whole meetings and we have two council meetings. We cut it down to one council meeting, but that'll be up to the new council whether to go back to two and two. And the reason we had it two in the afternoon and two in the evening, we had two committee of the whole meetings in the afternoon, and anybody from the public could come and make their presentation there. So those that worked in the evenings could come to the afternoon. Those that couldn't come in the evening is what the reverse side. Those that couldn't come in the afternoon could come in the evening ones. Secondly, having a committee of the whole, you have to have staff. By having your council meetings at night or up, and your committee of the whole meetings in the evening, you have to bring staff back, you have to keep staff there, and that's costly, folks. When you keep staff for an extra four hours, twice a month, that is costly. And uh, this is what we try to avoid, to provide the best service for all of our residents. Some seniors don't like to drive during the evening, so they can come in the daytime, some can come in the evening. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. Robert Taylor? Actually, I really don't care when you have the meeting. 
And if you want to have it at 6 in the morning, it's okay with me. I just have to get up early. Uh, so, I don't think the timing is a real issue. I think the problem is, is participation. We'll, put, we'll make the meetings whenever people will come, but we would love to have people come to the meetings. I went to meet at the council meetings for five years as the only member of public. I was the only one that would appear at six o'clock every twice a month on Monday. And I did it because I was interested. I wanted to see how it worked and I wanted to see if there was a place that I could contribute. And I think so far I found the place. Thank you, Robert. Brad Bates. Yes, absolutely. Um, if that's what the public wants, we'll move, move the meetings to the evening, and I think you will see a lot more people there who will participate. Thanks, Brad. Linda Carr. Is this a council meeting only? Is this council meeting only? Is that what you said? That's what it said, council meeting. No matter to me. I'm the one that's working. I'm the one that gives up time every Monday. They yeah, Monday, the uh, council meetings are always in the evening anyway. Are they at seven? They're at the six. The question was seven. Okay, well, it's only an hour. But I would love to have all of you come. It's, it's open. I mean, as Robert said, he came four years in a row. Every council meeting, he was sitting at the back of the council chambers. Every solitary time. Thank you, Linda. Donald Wills. You have your council meetings or your committee meetings at night. It's wide open. Just tell the staff to take Fridays off. It's simple. They'd like a long weekend. I think uh, one of the messages that came is, you people tell the uh, council what you want. And what I would say though, is I definitely believe there should be no public meetings called for before five o'clock at night because I've attended three or four public meetings this year and there's been nobody there so if you're going to get public input make it so that people are working and others can be there to the input be done. Kathy Livingston. Doesn't matter to me which time the meetings are. I'm out usually every night doing something, so it's it's fine. Whatever the people want, I think uh, at least one in the daytime would be good because seniors don't like to be out driving at nighttime, and uh, so whichever I'm good, whichever way it goes. Kathy, Paula Banks. I think I must know different seniors. Most of the people I know aren't home before ten. Anyway, I think moving the meetings tonight is a wonderful idea and all meetings. We want the public's input and it's very important that we get it. I also agree with Donald and you won't hear me say that very often. I have no problem giving staff Friday afternoons off if they're willing to work late on Mondays and I think that would be zero cost to the taxpayers. Thank you, Paula. Uh, we now have an opportunity for all the candidates to give closing remarks and we're in the same order. We're going to be starting with Claire Dunaway. Uh, I'm really excited to be running for council because I love living in Elgin uh, and in the Rio Lakes and I, uh, I've spent a lot of time and uh, a lot of breath um, promoting it already and uh, writing about it every week in the news. Um, so I certainly intend to carry on being chair of the Rec committee and uh, co-journalist in the Elgin News Collective. Uh, one way or the other, but I, I do really hope that um, everybody's interest in, in, their, in their communities carries through past the elections on the 27th, and that uh, I think a lot of the issues that we've been talking about tonight wouldn't be issues if the people who lived here already were a little bit more active in their communities and made it seem to everybody else like it was a great and vibrant place to live. We could get growing instead of moaning about our, you know, financial regrets of the past. If we could be excited for our futures, uh, I think that would make for a much nicer place to live. Oh, sorry, wrong. <laughs> 
Thank you. The, just, I just want to just review a couple of things. We, we talked about borrowing when we talked about the financing and the importance of why we borrow. But let me just reverse the question. You've heard of Build Canada Fund, the recent federal government uh, initiatives under the current budget, where it's a third, third, third under Build Canada Fund. So now, to get the best dollar for you, best value for your tax dollar, what would you do if somebody came along to you, like the federal government, provincial government, which we're going through right at this point in time, and said, "Here's 66 cents if you put up 30." <coughs> That's what you have to consider when we want to improve the infrastructure in, in our town. And I must say that, you know, there's a, there's a concept. I, I, as mayor, for the last few years, it's my responsibility to bring options to council. And there's the option for 2014. One of those to pay down our loan repayment of $1,315,000. Then there were three other options. Council chose the highest option, mainly because we wanted to, we wanted to improve two major roads, which are the most expensive ones, Hart Scrabble and North Shore Road. Those are the two longest roads we have in our inventory that we wanted to improve so that we're not buying graders for improving roads so that you have a better quality of road to move to uh, drive on. I, I, I certainly can, and I congratulate Council on the direction they've taken in the past and certainly size of Council is an issue that we have to look at as we move forward and I look forward to public meetings. We're going to need your input on that one. As I said, I've tried that twice and it's been defeated at all times. So let, let's have another look at that one. And it's going to take your input and your help to decide whether the council or the present size of council is necessary. Remember, it was probably required back in the days of amalgamation when we first amalgamated, because there was a ton of work to do. Official plans had to be amalgamated. Things are a little bit different now, and maybe we should just be looking at it a little bit differently. Anyways, I do thank you for your time, and I do want to thank our forefathers who basically marched down the street outside here in 1912. Thank you. Thank you. Robert Taylor. Well, first of all, I would like to thank everybody for the last four years. I've had a lot of fun. And I don't get enthusiastic a lot about a lot of things, but this has been, this past four years has been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot. And the amount of people I've worked with in my community on different projects has brought nothing but elation to me. It has made me feel very good. And to be able to do another four years, I'll be, I'll be over 70 when I get finished. And I'm still willing to do it, and I think I would have a lot of fun doing it. And I think with what I've even learned in the last four years, I can be a lot more efficient in getting what you want, when you need it, and when you want it. Because being on council is more than just being a person on council. There's a system and process in place that you do have to learn. And just observing it from the distance doesn't give you all of it. You do have to be involved for a while. And I think being part of the community and its various volunteer groups is one of your best ways to get a good idea of what your community wants and desires. Thank you very much. Thank you, Robert. Brad Banks. I uh, would like to thank the Citizens for Democracy for organizing tonight's candidate meeting and all your hard work to get us here. Um, having been a business owner in Elgin gave me the opportunity to meet many of the residents at one point in time. And talking with them gave me a broad understanding of our strengths and weaknesses in our community. I'm running in order to address those situations. A priority of mine is development within Rideau Lakes and our South Crosby Ward. We need to take a serious look at our planning services and development in order to make that happen. And let's start utilizing our resources and services that we already have within Rideau Lakes. And in closing, I'd like to say we need to work very hard to better, <coughs> excuse me, better the relationship between the residents and administration. It all starts there because without you, we wouldn't be here. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. Linda, I'm not sure how to, to close, except you guys are my people. Says Crosby, you are fantastic. I've been with you hot and heavy. I've gone through hell with you guys. Um, but anyway, I'm only a phone call away. I always have been a phone call away. And I 
think we are, our staff are fantastic. We have some staff in the, in the crowd. You have done a marvelous job, and I do thank you. Also, um, and my colleagues, they've been fantastic. We've had a great year. So on behalf of everyone, um, thank you for this opportunity. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Donald Wills. Just so you know, uh, if you read Westport here, I'm the other guy. Really? You can take my picture anytime, Mark. Okay. Uh, it's been 14 years since amalgamation. And I find the township still can't transform itself from the separate townships and villages to one core. Count, there's so many councillors. The rationale for locating community halls, recreation areas, Road department salt domes and dispatch for patients, which we're in the problem now with one failing unit. Uh, we have to develop a master plan which is agreeable to everybody and treat it as one town. You can't have one sector chiseling at the other sector. We must work with the people in our management of the township to work hand in hand with the taxpayers of the township to produce a beneficial result for all. And if I'm elected your mayor, I promise to listen to your concerns and seek out responsible solutions. <coughs> Choose your choices for council wisely, please. Thank you. Donald, Doug Good. First, like Brad, I want to take the opportunity to say thanks to John Carley and the Citizens Forum for Democracy and to Roger Gibson for uh, working together tonight to organize this opportunity to meet and hear the candidates and to the Lions Club for making their facilities available. And to you, uh, Catherine, for coming, or Carolyn, for coming down and, and moderating. You've done a great job so far. Just <laughs> so like I call it now, eh? Like, you know, like everyone in the audience tonight, I have learned something here. It's beneficial to come out and listen and participate, and I think that uh, that's good for all of us. And I think it's part of what has to happen in the future is lots of open communication so that we can go forward. I suggest to you, the voters, that the election is about three things affecting our future or our home. Fiscal management, we've heard a lot about fiscal management tonight. Changing the attitude of the township from a can't do to a can do. And those items that affect the quality of life in our community. To me, listening to the residents of our community and doing what is needed to move our community forward is going to be essential. The challenges are huge, bring debt in line. Operating core essential services while trying to hold taxes and finding ways to make the quality of life in our community better to attract businesses, young families, and all while serving an aging community. As Donald says, look well to your ballot. Thank you, Doug. Kathy Livingston? Anybody who has received my flyer will know that Kathy cares. Kathy cares about her community. She's one of those yellow and black signs all over the place. Anyways, and that is something that I do strongly believe in, is community and working together with each other. It's a goal that I have had for many years. I do help in my community of Delta with many things, and I do uh, look forward to, if I'm chosen, to help with the rest of the township and working with them. I think we are on a, a trend tonight. Everybody seems to have the same ideas. They're all looking to try to do what we can to make this a great place to live, better than it is already. And I think over the next few years, the next four years of council, I think there's an exciting change that's going to happen and I would like to be part of that and I hope that you will come forward and help uh, all councillors and the mayor think about who it is that you would like to represent you on council and will be open and helpful and do what we can. So thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Paula Banks.
Like everyone here tonight, I want what is best for Rideau Lakes. Low taxes, quality service, protect our water, a transparent and accountable government. In my opinion, we do need to stop borrowing. We are presently over $9 million in debt. I hope the next council learns to live within their means. I'd like to find a new approach for holding the line on taxes, like cutting costs. Let's implement a hiring freeze and do a full service review. Look at cost sharing even more services with other municipalities, such as building staff and heavy equipment. I also agree downsizing council is long overdue. I'd like to enter into a program with the high school and take advantage of those 4,000 volunteer hours that are available every year in exchange for valuable work experience. We need to also be open for business. Have a long-term economic development plan to grow business and residential sectors. This means we must continue to improve the reputation of our building and planning departments. Well, allowing development, I think that we should be 100% responsible for protecting our water and we should not leave it up to anyone else. We need to encourage our over 4,000 seasonal residents to move here full time. We need these people to eat in our restaurants and shop in our stores. Without them, places like Portland and Delta will become ghost towns. If I get elected, the biggest thing for me will be transparency and accountability. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. Rob Dunfield. Council's a team. The mayor only has one vote. We must work together to bring our township into the future. With my leadership, I know we can make Rita Lakes Township affordable, accessible, healthy, and a safe community for now and the next generation. An open and transparent government, a key in commu to communicate to our re residents. There are too many issues that have taxpayers going through hoops and FIA to get our answers. This is fundamentally wrong. This is your council. We are the public. We will ensure that information is sent out to the people. Our road maintenance program must have a new direction. Maintenance will be done on gravel and secondary roads on a regular and timely basis. We have focused too much on tar and chip. I'm not convinced this is the way to go. They seem to break up prematurely and we're continually topping them off again. Our sidewalk maintenance program within our villages have been overlooked. Let's get back to basics. Tourism is one of our main economic drivers. The Township must ensure our visitors and residents have clean, clear lakes, docking spaces, safe roads and trails. To do some of this, we must support our lake associations and we need to support trail development for those who walk, snowmobile, ski, ride, ATVs and just enjoy being outside. All play an important role in tourism. I fully support a complete service review in all departments. There are savings to be had and it should make us more effective and efficient township. Volunteers are a tremendous asset for us. We can't put a dollar on that amount. We have folks supporting beautification, community hall, minor sports, recreation program, heritage, cemetery, service clubs, to name a few of the groups. Some of our volunteer groups spend their money fundraising efforts to pay for heat and hydro bills, and this is wrong. They need to be treated equal. In closing, support me. I will give you honest, strong leadership for the future. It's time for a change, and we're open for business. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. We were going to honor your time tonight to meet at 9 o'clock deadline. I think we did a pretty darn good job.